During the making of this video, the operators of various mines allowed the staging of certain conditions which may at first appear to be unsafe and not according to certain federal, state, and or company safety procedures. These scenes were created strictly to demonstrate the differences between correct and incorrect safety and work procedures in the mining environment. They in no way are a true reflection of the condition or operation of the mine shown in this video production. Hello, welcome to another in our exciting mine safety video training series. Can you imagine trying to get through a work day without the use of an overhead crane or hoist at your work site? They can have many moving parts, which all must be in sound shape and work together. Specific hands-on training is required for the operator. Today, we're going to cover operator training, the pre-operation inspection, rigging the load prior to lifting, lifting and moving the load, and properly moving the load to its destination. Excuse me. Ben Hart? Why, yes. When our training session is completed, you will better understand the safe methods for inspection and operation of cranes and hoists. Have a safe day. We sometimes take cranes and hoists for granted during the workday. But imagine for just a moment what it would be like not to have a crane lift a blower fan or a large part for a piece of mobile equipment. How about not having the crane to hoist a newly repaired motor for use at the plant? And what about doing without a crane to lift pipe and other fabricated steel in fab shops? No matter what the situation, the crane is handling a lot of weight, the load must be kept under control at all times, and the load must be as safe in the air as it is on the ground. We know that there are frame chain hoists, work trucks with booms, overhead cranes, and many other cranes in the mining environment. We can't cover every single item of training for every crane, but we can examine some general guidelines of inspection and safe crane operation that will apply to any crane. So let's get started by covering some information on a topic that you might not think about, but that's very important. Crane Operator Qualifications. As an operator, you need to read and understand the manufacturer's instructions for the kind of crane you're going to be operating. Read the manual from cover to cover, and if you have any questions about the information, ask your trainer or your supervisor now. Get the answers to your safety or operational questions now during the training process. The operator of the crane needs specific hands-on task training from an instructor on how to correctly use the crane. That training most likely will come from an experienced crane operator. Listen and carefully follow his instructions completely. An operator needs to be in good physical condition with good vision, good hearing, and the ability to react on time to the challenges and changing conditions during the operation of the crane. If you are taking any over-the-counter medication or prescription drugs, check to be sure that they will not affect your alertness, vision, hearing, or balance. When preparing to conduct a pre-operation inspection, are all workers in the surrounding area out of the way of the crane? If so, ensure that the main control switch is in the off position. Push all other switches into the on and the off position. 
or any of those switches sticking and not working properly. If all of the switches work correctly, look at the ground below the crane for any sign of fluid leaks that might have come from the motor. Look up at the crane motor itself. Do you see anything unusual or out of the ordinary? If there's no excess fluid on the floor and the crane motor appears to be in good condition, now turn the main switch to the controls back on. With the controls on, run the hoist rope out and down and inspect the rope for frayed or broken strands, bends, kinks, and any other damage. With the hoist hook in the down position, is the hook free of any cracks, distortions, or corrosion? Is the latch attached to the hook, and does it correctly operate and close against the hook? A very important point now. Does the hook swivel on the block 360 degrees or a complete turn? A hook that binds and twists on the block may twist the hoist rope, causing damage to the rope, and result in a dropped load or accident later. Run the rope back up and look to see that the rope spools on the drum and is centered during the process. Without a load on, check all of the controls in each direction. As you run the hoist into the upward position, is the upper limit switch operating and does it stop the hoist in the correct position as it approaches the crane drum? You want to inch the block into the limit to see that the switch stops the hoist block. The hoist should stop moving up and shut off after making contact with the switch. What do you do if there are any defects or operating problems during the inspection? Document any defects in writing on your pre-operation report and immediately notify your supervisor or the designated person. Ask them to review the defect before putting the crane back into service. Prior to rigging the load, look up at the load rating for the crane, which should be posted on both sides of the crane and clearly visible from the ground. Each hoist should have its own load rating as well. Never exceed the rated load limit for the crane or the hoists. In calculating the weight of the load, remember that the load consists of everything below the hooks, including slings, spreader bars, and other rigging hardware. Always use slings or other lifting devices to rig the load. Never lift two separately rigged loads at the same time. The separate motion of loads may put unpredictable stress on the hoists, making the loads difficult to control and causing an accident. When calculating the weight of the load, you have to consider the size of the load in addition to the weight. You've got to be sure that the load will clear all potential obstacles. Check to make sure that the pathway is wide enough for the load to pass through. Inspect the landing area where the load is headed for. Is it level? Is it large enough for the load? Is it strong enough to support the weight of the load? For the next step, attaching the load to the hoist hook, bring the hook directly into position over the load's center of gravity. This is the point where the weight of the load is concentrated. Starting with the hook in line with the load's center of gravity helps to minimize the chances that the load will swing back and forth. It also has the potential to eliminate hazards from a side pull which puts greater stress on one or the other hoist rope, weakens the crane, and even causes the trolley to come off the rails. The hoist hook needs to be big enough for the sling or load attachment to fit securely in the bowl of the hook. There should not be any overlapping of the sling eyes or overloading the tip of the hook. Make sure the hook latch is in place and that it is functioning properly. Never disable or remove the hook latch. Now, is the hoist chain or the rope free of bends, kinks, and is it wrapped around the load itself, which could cause an accident? As you're ready to lift the load, 
Be sure that there are no tools or materials on top of the load to be transported. By the way, don't allow any hitchhikers on the load. Never raise, lower, or travel with a load in which any person is on the load. Be sure that everyone in the immediate area is clear of the load and aware that it is being moved. It is a good idea to lift the load just a few inches and to test the hoist brakes to make sure that they will hold the weight. If there is any slippage at all, the load is too heavy and should not be lifted. Now hear this. Never make any fast or sudden moves with a crane. All moves should be smooth without any sudden speeding up or slowing down. Before attempting to lift the load, make sure that all of the slack is out of the chain or the rope. Keep your hands and arms from between the sling or rope and the load. As you begin to lift, start the hoist slowly and gradually accelerate. Always stop the hoist before it reaches the upper limit. Remember, the limit switch is for emergency stops only. Never use the hoist limit switch as an operating control. You need to be aware of the load's tendency to swing or to rotate. To prevent excess movement, get someone to walk along with a tag line and to guide the load. Don't be tempted to steady or guide the load with your hand. Use a tag line to safely accomplish control. During the movement of the load, stay alert for any unusual sounds or warning of any kind that might indicate a reason to stop the crane. Cranes, hoists, and slings don't usually fail all at once. An unusual noise or a sound may be an early indication of a problem and give you time to stop the load now. During load movement, never allow anyone under a load. Sound the crane's alarm if there is one and make sure that everyone is out of the path of travel before you continue. If someone tries to talk to you during the movement of the load or distracts you in any way, stop the movement of the load until you can tell them that you need to finish and then you can communicate with them. Okay, bring it on, Fred. If you can't see the load or you don't have a clear vision of its path, you must have another person help you. This person must be able to see the load and where it's going. The person must be able to give you directions by either radio or hand signals. If a radio is being used, the person should continuously repeat the instructions as long as they are valid. If they don't repeat the instructions or there is any interruption in radio communication, stop the movement of the load at once. Restart only when radio communication begins anew. If you are using hand signals, then the person using the signals must be trained in the use of signals that you understand and are used to using. A detailed guide of hand signals should be available for review by both the crane operator and the person using hand signals to guide the load. Obviously, the crane operator needs to be able to see clearly the person giving those hand signals. The crane operator should obey those signals unless he believes that an accident is about to occur. If this happens, stop, talk to the person giving the hand signals, and proceed only when it is safe to do so. If a stop signal or an emergency stop signal is given by anyone, even a person other than the one giving hand signals, then the crane operator must stop the load movement at once. Lower the hoist slowly and gradually when you are over the landing area. Reduce the speed and movement gradually. Proceed at the slowest speed possible until the load is resting in the landing area. Once the load has been correctly lowered to the landing, only then should you remove the sling or the rope from the hook. After removing them from the hook, you may then safely pull them out by hand from under the load. Whatever type of slings that you use, always store them where they will be protected from damage. Don't leave slings or hardware hanging on the hook of the crane. Before leaving the crane, raise the hook to just below the limit switch. Now it's out of the way of people, equipment, or vehicles below. Secure the crane properly. 
Remote hand controls should be stored in a designated area when they are not in use. The same applies for controls on a belt that you wear around your neck. Safe crane operation. It might not be quite as simple as you thought. If you follow today's training guidelines, however, you're going to be on the right track as a crane operator. Remember, always perform a pre-operation check on the equipment. Always make dead gum sure, not just regular sure, the load is within the crane's maximum load rated capacity. Be careful to rig the load correctly before lifting. Move the load with steady, smooth movements. Lower the load and remove slings from the hook by hand. Store all slings and lifting hardware in the proper area. And the same goes for all hand controls. With your attention to safety and correct operation, you'll get the job done on time while protecting yourself and your fellow workers. Until our next exciting mine safety training video, work safe.